Hello everyone and welcome to the Dialogues from Silicon Valley. My name is Vlas Lezen and I'm Chief Operating Officer at Silicon Valley Innovation Center. Today we have our wonderful guest, Dr. Susan Hanold. We continue our discussions on innovation, human capital and innovative culture that drives businesses forward around the globe. Dr. Susan Hanold is a talent strategy expert and thought leader with more than 20 years of result-based leadership experience as an executive coach and organization development expert. As a vice president at ADP Strategic Advisory Service Group, Susan collaborates with clients to build talent strategies that improve employee engagement, retention, and drive organizational change. Susan was selected as one of the top women in HR technology by Recruiting Daily, nominated on the 2020 Most Inclusive HR Influencers List by Social Mico, and received the 2019 Readership Award by Training Industry Magazine. Prior to joining ADP in 2012, Susan served as a Vice President of Organizational Development with Bear Stearns, created the coaching model for Yum Brands, and served as a Change Management Consultant at Accenture. She currently serves as a Human Capital Executive Research Board. Susan has created and delivered global human capital management workshops for many of the Fortune 500 companies covering key areas such as M&A best practice, HR transformation, and talent trends. Susan, thank you so much for joining us today. Good to be here. So uh, let's jump right into that, right? And uh, what is to you a future of work? So, so, so that's my first question to you. Oh, hey, thanks for inviting me, boss. Um, great question, the future of work. So for me, you know, I, I visit with our clients and I have an opportunity to really talk to a lot of CHROs and really hear, you know, what, are, what is important to them when it comes to building their HR strategy. And the future of work, I feel like the marketplace changes a lot of things. So, you know, given where we are today, it's really sped up a lot of the automation. So from a technology perspective, I see technology really pushing uh, some of the projects that companies had. So I, I think those timelines have sped up. So I'll always say that technology is, is important in having a good technology roadmap. And the future of work right now is, I think there's a little bit of a divide happening. There's the people that are actually doing the work, right? The frontline work that has to get done. And then you have sort of this, uh, uh, folks that are doing it through remote working, right? You have the benefit of being able to be online today like us. Uh, so there's this, you know, this divide, if you will, these two, you know, the essential workers and these frontline workers right now. And I think there's definitely an opportunity to make sure we're not forgetting both groups. So from the future of work, I see it being disrupted, processes being disrupted, uh, things getting sped up. Uh, companies really looking saying, what is critical work today? What is really important? And then what can be automated so we can get rid of that administrative pieces. So where is it critical that a human touch something and make the impact? And then where is it important to automate? And so I do see a lot of uh, automation happening, but I also see a lot, what I'm also seeing on the future work is that human side actually coming out and being important, like putting people first. Like for the first time, I think it's great. Like in human relations, we're actually talking about humans. So that piece has been an actual nice shift for me uh, to see that happening. Uh, but I do think from a deconstruction of jobs, a lot of companies are saying, you know, how am I going to get that work done? What's the talent ecosystem going to look like? Is it going to be, do I want to have full-time employees? Do I want to have part-time? Do I want to have a blend? And can I use gig workers? So that to me is, uh, for me, is opening up who are the right people to do the jobs or the task, if, if that makes sense. No, definitely. And I think, and I think in general that it's, it's really interesting how uh, we all talking, we all have been talking about the automation, robotic process automation, mm -hmm. different kind of workflows. And then we were saying that, you know, robots is going to take all, our, all, all of our jobs and then something happens that actually tests that. And we understand how valuable humans are and how essential pretty much every mm -hmm. worker is for every company. So on that note, I kind of just try and balance future and today. So I see that a lot of companies right now are caught in the interesting situation, let's put it this way, because they were thinking, you know, that future, that innovation is you know, five, maybe 10 years away. And now pretty much we leapfrogged into that future really quickly because we had to. And in this situation right now that people are still very reluctant from what at least I can see, to actually look a little bit forward. They all try to focus on the today. They all trying to focus on what is happening right now. But then at the same time, I feel that 
people do not really look forward to what will be happening in a year and two years and kind of preparing themselves for the future. So why do you think we have this discrepancy where we have this pretty much a prime example of why you should care about the future and people still not caring about that future? Well, gosh, you're asking such a great question here. And I don't know if I have the right an the answer, but I will dialogue with you because I feel like it's a really good one. You know, I, I look back and I think years ago when I first started out in business, I had five-year plans, five-year business plans. I look and there are three-year plans. Then you have a one-year plan. And now we have such a disruption that it's like every day, it seems like the marketplace has a new topic. You know, I look back three months ago and I was talking about, you know, everybody went remote and work from home. And, and now it's, you know, it's really changed to a bigger, to me, business model of work from anywhere, workplace flexibility. And then it kind of went to, you know, diversity, inclusion, plus equity, right? You know, and so that keeps changing. And, and I feel like unless you have a core strategy, you're going to keep having these sort of ping pong balls that come in and then can, you know, either you have that as a strong foundation or you're going to kind of get, you know, those balls are going to keep moving around and you're not going to know what are those top three most important things you're going to focus on. So, um, so one, I don't know if I know the, the right answer to that one, but I feel like, um, for me, you know, there's certain things where I see folks staying on campaigns and companies that'll say, okay, return to work or return to the workplace. And it's kind of, in a way, I feel like some people can get burned out because you like, you keep saying it and you're like, so is this, this might, we might be working remotely a little bit more long-term. So why don't we look a little bit more long-term? Are we making those investments in the technology or what? I'm just using that as an example, the people process and technology to make sure we have the proper setup for the longer term. Uh, and you know, right now, because the marketplace is good and they're saying, no, I shouldn't say good. Well, there's people that have lost their jobs. That's not good. But we went from now having a lot from a talent pool perspective, having a big talent pool. And so I, I wonder, and the question is, how are companies going to treat people? So, you know, people will remember how they're treated if they're offboarded right now. Um, and so it may be short term, but those people remember and will leave a brand image on you longer term. And so to your short and long term impact, uh, how you treat those folks and how what those processes are will be very important. And from the shorter term, people have had to pivot very quickly. So when it comes to either uh, onboarding, hiring, uh, I've seen, I, I use it now as hashtag virtual. Everything's gone virtual, right? So hashtag virtual onboarding, virtual recruiting, you know, virtual interviewing, uh, everything. And if you didn't have that technology and it's how to get, how do you get your employees comfortable very quickly with this change? So are you able to pivot your strategy uh, to, for me, quick enough and agile enough and adjust, adjust your policies? I find that from that, you know, creating your strategy, I'm finding that whatever playbook I had in February might be a good foundation, but it is a new world. Like you said, the future of work it is all new right now. I mean, I can't use any presentation that I've had um, from February because it has all been blown up. So what do yeah. you think about that, Floss? Yeah, you know, I think, I think that, it's, that it's really, really interesting about that. It's not only like technology and innovation, maybe, right? But it's also the, how you treat people. And I think it's, it's very important because as you said, with, the, with this change, I think people understand that you can pretty much work from everywhere. Talent, talent is everywhere. Uh, companies are more will be more willing to pretty much have people working from everywhere so the question is is that how many how many people will be willing to sacrifice something you know to go to the office or maybe go to the metropolitan area and work for those big companies or would they they let her, rather stay in a lake tahoe and work maybe for right. something else right yeah so 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 i think that that uh necessity of mm -hmm. really connecting with your employees so you either current and future ones will definitely mm -hmm. be something that will be defining the future of work because pretty much with that hashtag virtual is not really a future it's already happening right so mm -hmm. it is it is already happening it is already from the technology perspective from the productivity perspective it is already there so what i think but what's coming next is exactly is how how companies tr should treat their employees and maybe again take some some of those office costs and spend mm -hmm. them on the, your employees because that's going to be what defined the future of work that how you build the relationship between the employee and employers in that new environment. Mm -hmm. So that's- Yeah, and when, when I think of that relationship, I've had leaders asking me, how do I know they're being productive now? 
how do I uh, connect with them like you and I are on the screen, you know, video today? How do I show trust and how do I show compassion and humility and those type of softer skills that, uh, because, you know, one of the things I always talk about too is like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? You first need to have that first line of safety and security first. Then you go up to sense of belonging and you can keep going up to, you know, um, a sense of, you know, I feel like I can connect with people. I feel safe. And as you go up, then you can actually do your work and then you can have those work conversations. But until I kind of feel like you and I have good trust and I can trust you as my manager and then I can be more productive. But that's the other shift I'm seeing is the, you know, tech skills. And that was very, very critical. But now I'm seeing this, sh this shift in uh, skills like um, an empathy, good listening, uh, asking good questions, you know, the question like, how are you feeling today? Or how are you doing? So many times we'd walk down the hall, and we'd be like, hey, how's it going? And then we really don't even wait for the person to answer. Like, hey, it's all good, right? That's yeah, yay. But and, hey, at least we connected. But now is really using that as an icebreaker and really waiting for the answer. Because I'm telling you that everybody who's talking about what's going on today, something's going on new or different, right? Somebody's gonna talk about their dog barking in the background or something, if you right? So I feel like that has shifted a bit, uh, those skills. Yeah, and I also, I also think what, what is important is that I think with that productivity, I feel mm -hmm. that more and more people, more and more employees need to be kind of self-leaders, mm -hmm. right? So they need to be, uh, be able to take care of their own stuff and, be, and, be, and feel empowered and have enough, uh, enough uh, tools, promotion their toolbox to make sure that they can do whatever is asked for them. So on that note, so what do you think is the top three things that executives or managers right now can do to empower their employees to be the better versions of themselves? I think one is just the role of the manager is so important. You know, my nephew told me this story. He was uh, working at a restaurant and he's in high school and this is his first job. And so in February, he had a task. His task of working in the restaurant was X, Y, and Z. But in May, he got a whole new set of tasks. He was very nervous. He was worried about, uh, you know, I don't know if I can do all this new checklist stuff. Uh, and the, and you know, he actually was going to drive now. He's going to, his job actually had, had to change. And he had to, of course, do all the check-in procedures, you know, temperature and everything. And he was nervous. And I'm asking him, I'm going, Caden, why are you uh, nervous about this job? And he goes, uh, you know, because I'm worried I might make some mistakes. I might not remember all the right things. I've got a new job. But that role of the manager, he told me his manager actually calmed him, gave him a sense of comfort, uh, gave him some recognition that he needed, uh, and really confirmed what he was doing was right. And so to me, that really says the role of the manager and the impact they can have on team engagement, how important that is. And the second one is really making sure that they have meaningful work. Like, you know, at this point, you've seen a lot of folks say, stop the extra do what's required. And, you know, and, and I, I see a lot of people actually raising their hand and saying, hey, I really think I need to do some, I could jump in over here and help. So I think the role of the manager and being able to have meaningful work and, and, and knowing that maybe what I'm doing before, I'm just doing it, one, either to keep my job, but two, I really need to add value. So I think really having good conversations, not forgetting about goal setting, and the, and the last one is really just recognition. Like people want to be valued and they want to know that the work they're doing is good. So not forgetting about those touch points, those check-ins uh, are, are, are really important. And then you mentioned it too about having the tools and the resources to do your job. So a lot of companies are investing in making sure you're set up for success. So uh, the other day I had something broke and I needed it uh, uh, for my workstation. And right away they said, and I told them why I needed it. And I built my business case and they gave it to me right away. And I think that's important to be thinking about is, are you making it complicated for the employee to get what they need so they can do their job? So make those processes seamless and easy so uh, they have a good experience internally, not just externally for your customers, but internally. So, so, so on that note, so um, when you said that get, get a meaningful work, and I also think I might add and and not sure if you agree, but I think it also means that managers have to shift their perception a little bit. They need to do a little bit more planning. They need to, to do a little bit more of goal oriented work instead of, you know, someone just being at work 
doing certain certain stuff. So managers have to think about what are the goals, what are the deliverables that their workforce has to deliver given the, the situation, so to speak. But on that note, do you think that we kind of forever move away from this kind of nine to five, 40 ish hours a week uh, workforce for the people who are not, let's say essential workers and pretty much need to man the station. So do you think that this nine to five work week is a thing of the past and we will just go and try to uh, focus more on the delivering the results on being comfortable with our own schedule, with our own kind of setups, uh, be it at home, be it, be it at office if needed, be people working together. So do you think that future of work is more productive focused on the delivery rather than, you know, punching and punching out. Yeah, I can't answer that because my brother who, you know, is a COO for a manufacturing company, they've got, they're making product, right, in their machinery working. And so it's a little bit of a different work environment, but it's a, it's a definitely a big shift and a big question. So the clients I'm working with now are actually saying, help me be, build a business case. Can this be a cost savings to me? Could this be a talent retention uh, strategy, you know, to retain top talent. Will my ecosystem uh, go wider? Uh, you know, from will I get more diverse candidates? You know, to have more diversity of ideas. And so I think those questions are starting to happen, and I'm really enjoying them because I I'm having to do something a little different. You know, you know, ADP is blessed to have we have a, a, dire a director of workplace flexibility and enablement, uh, and so her and I've been basically touching base every day about. You know, what, what are we doing internally to, to adjust our policies and what are we and what am I seeing externally? So I, I feel like the conversation is happening. I do see companies changing their job descriptions already where you can go in and you can search just from, you know, virtual or I just want to search for a state. Uh, so I, I feel like it's almost becoming a, a first question. Well, do I have to be in Dallas? I mean, like, I don't even care what the job is. Can I be anywhere? And probably RV sales are up right too. But uh, so I, I have seen that. I do see more of the business cases uh, for companies saying, help me see the numbers and help me from the business perspective, see the bigger picture of this. And I like having those conversations because I love to challenge uh, and not just, let's just say status quo. Uh, let's not make the assumption that just because we, it's, it's, people are saying this, don't go back to the workplace. Let's actually step back and think, do we have a chance to reinvent re and do something totally different? Can we do it different if it makes sense? Um, yeah. So. Yeah, no, no. And I, and I think, I, and then I think that's, uh, that's how it starts, right? So people kind of tinkering with the idea and going forward of seeing what that future I might actually look like and how it might change the but overall I'll share, I debate it with my brother-in-law who he can't wait to get back and stay in his, but he doesn't want necessarily need to go back five days. I've actually seen some people changing their behavior. Now he's like, well, three days is good, you know, three out of five. So I do see other, I'm, I'm sorry to jump in, but I am seeing some companies that are flexing their, uh, their schedules, their shifts. So some are keeping core teams together. Some are saying, hey, due to my demographics, I may allow them to flex their schedule more. Maybe because given what's happened, maybe they'll come in later. So from eight to 10 is time for kids in school, but maybe we'll start meetings at 10. So I have seen some companies uh, doing some pilot tests like that and actually starting committees and focus groups and asking folks. And I think it's fantastic. Like, you know, way to be open and transparent. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, you, you're absolutely right. Well, well, uh, so far, so far, again, I'm real optimistic about things that are changing and how we're actually moving to the more happy, let's put it this way. To, I'm to optimistic to, too. I'm a positive yeah. person. So together, you and I will just be optimistic, yeah. right? Absolutely. And, and, and exactly, I think, I think that, that in a lot of cases that are people moving towards the more happy, more fulfilling, more flexible, so so to mm -hmm. speak, uh, workplace. And I think that technology can only enable so much, but people mm -hmm. still have to be empathetic, have to work with each other, have to be true to each other and be open about the changes that are coming. Well, Susan, thank you so much for your time today. It was an absolute pleasure uh, speaking with you today and I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.